Well, good evening and uh, welcome to Greater Grace Church of Chester and Ellesmere Port. Uh, it's good for us to open God's Word in the middle of the week. Uh, we're going to be live on, on Facebook uh, for the next half hour or so, uh, just uh, looking at God's Word and uh, sharing it with those that want to receive it. Uh, so welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we are great a great evangelical church in Chester. You can also find us at uh, ggechurch.co.uk and on YouTube at great a great evangelical church and also on Instagram. Now, uh, last week we were watching a international convention. We weren't able to be there in person this year, but we were able to receive as, as many of the the portions as we could over the internet it was good to hear the word and be encouraged and some of us were able to watch it together uh, as the body of Christ uh, so that was uh, also good to have the fellowship and life as well we also managed to call a couple of people so we may still try and do that again this week to call a few people in the States just to get that uh, encouragement and that maintain that contact where we normally would have seen them in person. Uh, be praying for various people. I know a lot of people have been sick after the uh, after their return home, so uh, we just want to lift people in, in prayer and also in the body here in uh, the UK. I know that quite a few people are, are sick at the moment, so we want to lift those people up as well. Uh, so uh, tonight. Before we get going, just a, a, a couple of words. Um, the ladies of the church were together yesterday, uh, had a time uh, listening to some of the uh, ladies' events from Baltimore and, and uh, were uh, very encouraged for that. Tonight we are, we are online. Uh, please leave us a, a like, a nudge, a, a, a wink, a wave, a, a comment, an emoji, a, a, a gif whatever you decide if you can hear us and see us just so that we know that people are watching uh, now on uh, Friday this week we're going to do something new we're going to call it Fisherman's Friday and uh, the idea is five o'clock after work if you are available or not far away from the city centre of Chester we're going to meet down by the river uh, God willing, I, I can be there uh, by about five o'clockish. Uh, we'll meet by the bandstand, and the idea is we will go as as, as fishermen in the spiritual sense. Uh, we'll meet together, fellowship together. Maybe we'll see if we get the chance to have a coffee or something like that. We'll see. Just to have. Uh, life, body life together and maybe give out a tract or two as well talk to people if we can that is the idea that it's uh, uh, an event for us to be together as God's people uh, enjoy uh, the presence of the Lord together uh, be encouraged by each other uh, and just uh, trust God and let's see whether God opens up any doors as well while we're there so that's the, during the month of July we'll do that on a Friday uh, afternoon around five o'clock if you're available uh, if you'd like to if you maybe you can't make it at five but you'd like to uh, suggest a different time I'm open to that um, we, you know we can do that so uh, just uh, let us know what time would be better if, if you would really like to be there uh, but if you do uh, if you do want to change the time make sure that you are there that's all I'll say for that <laughs> so um, yeah, that's uh, that's coming up this week, and then Sunday, eleven o'clock, you can meet with us in Backford uh, and have life together. Now, next Wednesday will be the first Wednesday of the month, and I, I suggest that maybe we have what we had the other week, which is prayer together, which we can either do. Oh well, let you know at the weekend whether we decide to do it at, at our house. In the open air somewhere at church uh, but again I think it would be good for us to meet together and if you can't meet with us join with us online uh, and we'll do it that way we we might not record it uh, but we will uh, 
open it up for people to share and join with us. Okay, so that's uh, things coming up for this next uh, few weeks. Uh, end of school event is on the 21st of July. Not that far away now, so uh, be praying for that. And just a reminder that that is the last, the real end of school event not just for this year but for every year uh, after 24 years so uh, it will be a special one so uh, come and join us for that so let's pray let's give this time to the Lord and we'll just trust him with each uh, situation Heavenly Father we just want to think uh, of uh, each one uh, your precious people Lord thank you for your life thank you for your love for each one of us, thank you for the convention that we had. Lord, we think of uh, people like uh, Pastor Perkins and uh, Ildiko and Pastor Moon and Robin, uh, uh, Pastor Don Barnes, various people in the uh, ministry who have been sick on their return, possibly caught on the flights. Uh, be with those that have COVID. Lord, we pray particularly also for Pastor Tony and Isabel, Lord. And for quick healing there Lord we pray for Ruby in our own church as well for her healing Lord and any others that are sick at this time lift up each one the, the mulligans each one uh, for various situations there Lord and the comfort after the uh, bereavement of the funeral Lord just wrap each one in your loving care there Lord we pray thank you that uh, your will is sovereign Lord we pray that you'd be with each one Lord be with Hayley and Tristan and Jane while they're away on holiday as well Lord cover there Lord we ask and just for each one pray for Lisa Dean as well Lord for again physical healing there Lord encouragement for those that need encouragement Lord uh, pray for a couple who are uh, being told that there may be problems with their baby Lord again just uh, friends of ours that we heard that Lord recently we pray that you just touch that uh, cover each one Lord now bless this season we pray minister your life Lord now to us guide and encourage Lord we ask fill us with your life tonight Lord we pray uh, be with Myrtle as well Lord as, as well as Ruby uh, different ones Lord just encourage this season now in Jesus name Amen ok so tonight we're going to open um, the Bible we're not continuing on in our series yet we'll leave that for next week we'll have a little break from it But we're going to look at Joshua chapter 1 and it says We'll read from verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, let's jump aside. as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto the, his, this people shall thou divide the inheritance of the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give them only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to the, the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. 
Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, but be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the hosts and command the people, saying, Prepare you with victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan and go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Wow. We have a, a visitor arrived. Oh, hello. It's good to see you. Uh, we're going to <laughs> pray now as well. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what we've uh, what we just heard, Lord, for your word from that chapter, Lord, Joshua chapter 1. Thank you, Lord, for for all of it, Lord, and just for every promise that you give us. Guide us tonight, Lord, we pray. Thank you for your faithfulness, and thank you for your touch on our lives, Lord. We ask that you would speak to us now, Lord. Go before us, encourage us heal lives Lord we pray turn situations around Lord we ask thank you Lord that you're the God of miracles you're the God of healing and life truth and beauty fill us with your spirit Lord now anoint us Lord we ask with your Holy Spirit we are nothing we are nobody we, we need you we look to you Lord and we trust you your spirit is power your spirit is truth Thank you, Lord, fill us and anoint us now. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, yes, we're sort of continuing on with what we received last week um, from uh, the International Convention with this theme uh, of the conference that was Take Courage. Uh, so we come to Joshua chapter 1, which again many people did preach on last week, but you know what, it is a good chapter. It is the one that we think of probably most readily when we talk about courage. Why? Because it's in there a lot, isn't it? Three times we read it out. Take courage, be courageous, take courage. Yeah, it, it keeps coming up. Uh, Last week there were so many portions, so much life, so many different takes on the same thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, life, message as adding to message. It's always good to be around God's word and God's people. Uh, yeah, just we want to continue on with a few thoughts on that subject as well. Take courage. Joshua there. It's funny, isn't it, in the Word of God, we, we associate certain people with certain characteristics. Like, as I say, maybe we think of courage, when, uh, think of Joshua when we think of the word courage, because it's in there. Uh, but, actually, uh, often with God's Word, the way we think of it is not necessarily the way things are. Uh, you know, we, we uh, years ago, uh, I, I always, I remember um, preachers uh, when I was growing up sort of saying, oh, um, uh, the book of, uh, of Philippians is full of joy. It's like lots of references to joy. It must have been a very joyful church, you know, and uh, uh, the book of, of, um, of uh, First and books of First and Second Corinthians. There's lots of good morality in there. These churches must have been very moral. But actually, you know what? When we we think about it logically, the reverse is probably true, isn't it? Uh, the book of Philippians is full of problems and difficulties and challenges. Uh, and uh, for the church itself. But actually, the joy of the Lord is what people needed to hear and needed to receive. And the same with, with Corinthians and uh, 
Uh, you know, the same with uh, with Ephesians. Oh, that's such a book about grace, isn't it wonderful? Yeah, because the church in Ephesus lost its first love and needed to be reminded, hey, it's by grace. God's gentleness, God loves you. That's the center of it, you know. Uh, we often uh, think of things the, the opposite way around to where they actually are. Maybe the fact that Joshua hears this message from God about taking courage, maybe it's because he really needed to hear it himself. Maybe he uh, had to be built up by the Lord to that degree uh, that God had to keep repeating, hey, take courage remember be courageous you know I'm going to be with you and think about it it's what in one sense uh, Joshua had a very challenging situation didn't he uh, he was going to uh, take over the leadership of the nation very uh, uh, complaining nation that had come out of Egypt and had done nothing but complain to Moses throughout the, the whole time that they were in the wilderness and it's like one thing after another one problem after another uh, and then here's Joshua having to assert his authority he had a very hard act to follow Moses there's this man of God you know shining face going up Mount Sinai with a staff that opens the Red Sea you know it's like a Oh, now it's you, Joshua. Yeah, it's like it's not easy. It's not a. It's a very daunting task for for Joshua to take on these things. Uh, it's uh, yeah, almost impossible. Uh, and then also uh, think about it as well that actually Moses had had his leadership challenged quite a lot hadn't he you know uh, first of all the people didn't want to receive him it's like well who are you you know it's like well then they do, he does the miracles they do they, there's the, the plagues and the people that actually trust him and it's like wow okay fine and then you know his own sister and his brother they rebel against him. His cousin, Korah, uh, leads a rebellion against him. Various other people, you know, it's like, oh, well, let's, let's, let's go. Oh, where's this Moses? Whole golden calf thing, you know. Time and time again, the leadership of Moses is challenged and questioned. And, well, we won't have him real help us, we'll have someone else. Joshua saw all of this, witnessed all of this, and now it's your turn, Joshua to go through everything that Moses went through <laughs> it's like wow thanks thanks Lord that's a real blessing isn't it but yes but so what does God say to him he says no uh, I promise to be with you as I was with Moses so I will be with you that's a great promise isn't it uh, Every, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon that uh, have I given unto you as I said unto Moses that's in verse 3 we didn't actually read that verse but it's good it's, uh, I remember when uh, I was living in Prague we were looking for a church building and I remember Pastor Grant King marching up to this building and saying hey let's pray every place the sole of our touch our sole of our foot touches you know God has given them to us he said let's pray for this building here and we prayed you know, on the doorstep of this building we didn't actually get it but we got one round the corner so it was like <laughs> in a way it was good you know it was it was wasn't far away from the one we prayed over but uh, uh, and it was a better building I think probably but uh, yeah it was perfect for what we needed at the time uh, but yeah, that's a promise, isn't it? That's a great promise from the Lord. You know, there shall not many, any man be able to stand before thee all thy days of thy life. As I was with Moses, 
so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, <coughs> nor forsake thee. Bless thee. Uh, wow, yeah. A great promise. Joshua needed to hear it, yes. Not only was that, that there was that leadership Oh, you know what? No, um, Moses' leadership was challenged all the time, and time and time again. But God brought Moses through. As I've been with Moses, I'll be with you. Okay, great, wonderful. There's also the point that she, Joshua is going to lead the people into the Promised Land, which is something that uh, Moses didn't do. It's like Moses is constantly uh, bringing them so far in the wilderness taking them round, leading them by the, 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 the Spirit of God, the pillar of, of uh, cloud by day, the pillar of fly, fire by night. And it's like, yeah, okay, great. But now they're coming into the Promised Land. What if it's a disappointment? Think about this, you know, sometimes we build something up. This is going to be wonderful, this is going to be great. For 40 years, this promised land has been built up in the nation of Israel. Now imagine that. Joshua is going to lead them into the land. Could there even be that thought in Joshua's mind? Well, what happens if we get to the land and it's not what the people want or what the people expect? This thing? Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be far better than Egypt. It's going to be oh, this great promised land. God's promised to us, you know. It's like, fine, you know, it's going to be, you know. And you can almost imagine it's like, you know, well, well, Joshua, it better not just be another big bunch of grapes. You know, it's like, yeah, okay, fine. You know, but we'll see. But there's that fear probably there. Well, what happens if, if people are disappointed? They don't like it. No, no, God is going to be faithful. Take courage. Battles are guaranteed here. Now Moses led the people and yeah, they, it was difficult at times. And the enemy did pick off the stragglers, if you remember that, at times. But actually, uh, you know, there weren't quite so many battles for Moses whereas actually going into the promised land battles are going to be guaranteed they're going to have to drive out uh, seven nations to gain this land wow that's a lot the Anakim remember that the, the sons of their Anak the giants oh they're in the land that was one of the things that stopped people from going in there Joshua was there. Joshua was there when he heard the evil reports. Him and Caleb were the only two who didn't believe the evil reports, but they still heard them. And it's like, oh, there's all these problems with them. We're going into the land. We can't do it. And it's like, we're very small. Okay, fine. But God says, now be courageous. Take the courage that I'm going to give you. Trust me. Trust me fully. And I will bring you through this difficult season. This may be the, the biggest challenge of your life. It may be the most difficult season you've ever faced. But I'm going there with you. And I'm going there before you. And you can take courage. You can trust in me wholeheartedly. Because I'm going to be with you. And I'm not going to fail you. You know, God gives us great promises. Wow. No man will stand before you all the days of your life. It's funny because uh, I think it was uh, one of the last days of uh, the conference last week. I was reading my daily devotions and it was uh, Isaiah uh, 54. And we know that verse at the end where it says, verse 17, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the lord 
and their righteousness is of me saith the Lord wow again it, it's a great promise that's made to the the uh, nation of Israel uh, in the era of the kings when uh, before they went into captivity and quite a few years before but actually again it's a great promise that no no weapons that are formed against us will prosper now there will be weapons formed against us let's make that clear uh, this world does not take kindly to our Christian faith the devil does not take kindly to our Christian faith sometimes our flesh does not take kindly to our Christian faith and it's like yes there will be difficult times there will be battles to face there will be weapons that people form against us but God says no it will not prosper and also I love that you know no tongue that rises against you in judgment um, you know it, that they will be they will be condemned you will condemn them uh, and again we've seen that over the years that you know again people have spoken against us uh, as God's people as our church as our ministry as 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 our faith um, as people of, of the Bible uh, as Christians you know people speak against us uh, very often and constantly there's a I think there's a day of day of the martyrs soon, isn't there? actually I can't remember what day it was I heard about it recently uh, Release International was speaking about it um, a, a day that commemorates uh, the martyrs uh, throughout history but actually you know what it's happening still today very often many parts of the world you know people, people that, that uh, but actually you know what God says you will have victory now it won't always be a physical victory it might be a spiritual victory but no weapon that is formed against you will, will prosper uh, and the tongues that rise in condemnation you will you will uh, put down wow why because your righteousness comes from the Lord this is Old Testament as well think about that for a minute we're used to it you know well you know Christ won the victory and we can have the righteousness of Christ but it's promised there in the book of Isaiah hundreds of years before Jesus but it's promised there as well that actually the, their righteousness will be the righteousness of the Lord but for the servants of the Lord wow great promises from our God but it's interesting as well because what we see in this book of Joshua is yes promises from God but then the opportunity to act upon God's promises and it's like yes we uh, yeah we we trust him we believe him we receive the courage we receive the strength we receive the support but then it's like well yeah go on take the land go on do these things you know uh, go into the inheritance take the inheritance that God's given you and there's, there's also action involved with it so yeah a promise from the Lord but then uh, uh, act upon it you know uh, I will not fail thee I will, uh, will forsake thee be strong and of good courage uh, for unto this people uh, thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them only be strong and very courageous that thou mayst ob observe to do according to the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it neither to the left hand nor to the right wow yeah cling to God's law wow that's good
you know is it just about positive thinking is it just about nice ideas is it just about self-help no it's a it is the righteousness of God it is the power from the Lord it is his courage yeah but that gives us the strength to go on uh, cling to the word of God uh, uh, stick close to the, the word that the Lord gave to Moses don't depart from it neither to the left or to the right we were hearing Pastor Texier talk about the oxen uh, last week uh, uh, or the cows the good cows that didn't go to the left or the right and, uh, and they went straight to where the Lord wanted them to take the ark but yeah it's a good uh, illustration but think about this the word of uh, the word that the Lord gave to Moses cling to God's word as a rhema for ourselves when we read God's word and when the Spirit of God speaks to us and we take it as a, as a personal thing that like God enlivens probably we've experienced this where we read a chapter of God's Word and, and certain verses jump out at us and really speak to us speak into our situation that we're going through at that point in time at that stage in life if we take that as a rhema this is the Spirit of the Lord word speaking to us through the Word of God, through the written Word on the page. And it's like, wow, cling to that. Keep that. that it, this Word of, of the Lord will not depart from you. Think about this. Maybe God gave us a promise years ago. Maybe He gave us a life verse to live by. Maybe He hasn't done that for you yet. Maybe it's your chance to discover a verse of scripture that is going to stay with you for your whole life maybe there are times that we've experienced God and he's spoken to a situation and we've never forgotten it maybe for some people it was like oh it was when I was baptized or when I first trusted God and I got saved maybe for others it's like well it was when I was going through this really difficult season in life and uh, I wasn't sure about what to, where to go uh, maybe it was an answer of prayer but there are times when the word of God does not depart from us it stays with us for our whole life because it has power and it has life and it encourages us and it's like wow the book of the law will not depart from us now think about this one verse that I learned when I was a very small child in Sunday school and I've shared this many times before I had to learn it off by heart when I was about I think five or six years old and say it on a stage and it was heaven and earth shall not pass away but my word heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away wow Yes, Matthew twenty four thirty five. The word of the Lord will not depart from us. Well, why? Because the word of the Lord is eternal, and it won't pass away ever. It won't pass away for anyone. There's nothing going to come against it. You know. Well, we need to update the Bible because it's out of date. No, you're not going to do that because it's God's word and it stands, and it's settled in heaven forever, and it, and it won't change for anything. And it's, well, we need to in interpret it differently in the light of uh, current trends and society. No, actually, the Word of God is powerful, quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's like, yes, it divides our soul from our spirit. It divides uh, the natural tendencies from the spiritual needs and requirements of the human heart and uh, wow so the word of God will, uh, will stay with us because the word of God lasts forever uh, this word will not depart from you but I like that as well it won't, it won't depart from out of your mouth keep confessing God's word keep preaching keep sharing keep 
witnessing to people keep sharing your faith with people keep confessing verses of scripture read it out in the morning I often come down in the morning while we're getting ready to go out and my wife will be doing her daily devotions and she will be reading the word of God out loud you know, I, I tend to just read it in my head but actually I often think it, it's a better way to read it out loud because you're, con you're confessing it to the atmosphere around and it says it won't depart out of your mouth you know could we lose something out of our ears could something go in one ear and out the other probably yeah but if we're saying it with our mouth confessing with our mouth yeah it's good but also think about this Hebrews 13 5 is a verse that maybe we know well and love well it says let our conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have for he hath said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee now often we quote the latter part of that verse oh you'll never leave us and forsake us great okay and it can be almost like this trite little saying about oh yeah oh, God will be faithful but actually we don't give it the full power because it's what it's saying is don't be covetousness don't set your heart on other things and, and be obsessed with the details of this world or wanting stuff and it says be content with such things as you have you know are we content with what God's given us or are we always striving for something to be different and changed and you know oh, we need new carpet we need a different car we need a better television we need to you know uh, we, um, and what about our church oh I think we need a better pastor oh I think we need more of this oh I think this could be different like this could be something you know what if we are dissatisfied it's not a good sign it's not a sign of a godly heart because actually the word of God says no be content because the Lord has said I am with you and I'm not going to depart from you I'll be with you and actually being with Christ is enough and actually having you know the Lord Jesus Christ and having Jesus at the center of your church is great and maybe your church is the best church you could ever be part of I'm not just talking to people in our church but you know wherever people are watching because actually you know what if the Lord is there the Word of God is there fellowship is there truth is there encouragement is there then actually yeah let's not be striving for something else that's not to say that things can never improve or not we're not saying that yeah there's, there's always there is always room uh, for 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 us uh, to to trust him more uh, and go forward more and uh, and see God act more but the point is being satisfied with what God's doing because his presence is with us and he has promised never to leave us or forsake us and I was thinking about that the, the Lord Jesus Christ he is the living word of God he is the living word in John chapter 1 he is the presence and the express image of the Father and he is the the embodiment of God's word of truth remember that and it's like yes so when it says the book of the Lord shall not you know the word will not depart from you it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ the presence of God he's not going to leave us he's not going to forsake us and because the living word is with us constantly we can have courage we can take courage be very courageous and go go forward into what God has called us that's the point here wow now think about this not long after this chapter 5 of Joshua who does he meet he meets the captain of the Lord's host 
someone who is commanding the host of heaven who is in a leadership position and who when Joshua bows down and worships he receives worship this is not an angel this is not a man but this is a, 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 the embodiment of the Lord himself in other words the Lord Jesus Christ coming down to say hey I'm here with you are you with me and it's like wow the Lord will not depart I will not leave you I will not forsake you or oh, I'm gonna be with you be courageous be bold go in take the land I've given it you as a promise I've given it you as an inheritance it's yours for the taking and I'm here with you wow after all that it says have I not commanded thee be strong and of good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee and whithersoever thou goest and it says then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying pass through this host and command the people saying prepare ye victuals for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God has given you to possess it wow okay so we take courage the Lord is with us but then what do we do we pass on that courage to the people we pass on what we've received from the Lord to those around us they go to the people pass it around spread it through the whole camp that actually God is with us we're going into the land get ready uh, get food ready uh, prepare it's action it's body life that's the thing let's get ready let's see what God's going to do it's a promise it's an inheritance but actually yes we're gonna do it and God's gonna do it and we we are we just we're going to rest in the possession that God's given us. It's our inheritance. It's our promise. And it's everything that God wants for us. And he's going to do it. And so let's get ready. Let's come together. Let's get people together. Let's get people excited. And let's go, go out there. This is one of the things that uh, I took away from uh, watching the convention this time. It is body life is yeah let's just get people together you know for whatever excuse it is sometimes and just share the words share life together encourage each other go out win souls win lives uh, share a verse eat, eat a cake eat pizza drink coffee whatever it is it doesn't matter but let's just be together let's go to the seaside let's go on a missions trip let's uh, go to a conference uh, let's let's just be together as much as we can and let's trust God oh but I can't afford it oh who's going to pay for the petrol oh who'll buy, who, who will buy the pizza you know what let's trust God and let's go and let's have a vision let's have a heart to be together and that's what uh, what changes our life is just being around the body of Christ being filled with the spirit of God being encouraged having words of life words of scripture and the promises of the Lord so let's take courage let's be bold um, yes we face a lot of seasons our church is going through a new season a season of change but again let's cross the Jordan let's trust him and let's go forward amen let's pray Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, as well, just for your word tonight, your words of encouragement to us, Lord, your words of truth. Thank you, Lord, that your heart is there to be with us, to not leave us, to not fail us, uh, that we keep trusting you. 
And Lord, thank you that your heart is for us to go forward together, trusting, uh, enjoying the presence of the Lord, enjoying our Saviour, enjoying the fact that he won't leave us or forsake us, enjoying each other's company as we all celebrate together in the word of God and the word of truth. Receiving promises, receiving ramus, uh, the word of God not departing from us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we don't come to a dumbed down at meeting where it's like, oh, well, if you want people to come in, you can't give them too much. You have to just spoon feed them a little bit. No. The word of God gives life. The word of God is power. Give people as much as they can receive. Take as many promises from the word of God as people can. That's the amazing thing. This is what gives us the life. This is what... Uh, this is where we see your heart, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're not a God who just gives a little dribble of, oh, you know, just a little bit. No. You give us a whole land, a promised land. Uh, just a couple of people go across the Jordan. No, the whole nation is going to go. Oh, some of your enemies won't prosper. No, no, none of the enemies will prosper. Thank you, Lord, for your promises. Give us courage now to go forward and trust you. Uh, give us the strength uh, and the wisdom uh, and the life. Uh, give us love for people, situations. Bless our week, Lord, we pray. Uh, bless this next season. We pray for the school as it comes to a, a close these next few weeks, Lord. Uh, and as people move forward in their callings, thank you, Lord, for each one. Bless thou, we pray. Thank you for those that are, are visiting uh, towards the end uh, of the summer. We think of Pastor Adrolone is coming uh, the conference with Pastor Boyce's church. And Lord, we pray that you just encourage there uh, as well, Lord. And help us to be a people that trust you, Lord. And just go forward together. Thank you, Lord. Guide us now, we pray. Fill us with your life. Fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray. If there's anyone watching who's never had that experience of trusting you, Lord, we pray that this would be the time when they just want to say, Lord, I want to discover your promises. I want to have your life. I know I need someone bigger than me. I don't have any courage of my own. I don't have any strength of my own. I just make a mess of my life. I fail and I, and I uh, do things wrong but Lord I thank you that you're a God of forgiveness and I thank you that you went to the cross for me and I thank you that you can be my saviour and I trust you Lord as the living word who won't forsake me and as my saviour now come into my heart in Jesus name Amen. Okay, we're going to sign off now. Uh, please join us again soon. Uh, find us online or come and meet with us. As I say, we'll be in Chester on Friday night and uh, on uh, Sunday morning. Come and join with us in Backford. Uh, take care, God bless, and see you soon. Bye for now.